1978, the U.S. Navy frigate USS Stein experienced an emergency that no one expected. The sonar dome designed to detect submarine threats suddenly broke down, though no one had any idea why. Only one thing was clear. The frigate had been attacked by an unknown animal, large and aggressive enough to damage the ship and then disappear into the depths of the ocean. After colliding with the unknown creature, USS Stein immediately headed to the dry dock where the engineers set off to examine the fault. And they discovered a strange thing. The rubber coating of the sonar dome was severely damaged. About 8% of the surface was covered with large tears. Some of them were up to 4 feet long, and damaging the coating like that would require some real power. It soon became clear that this was no mere accident or routine malfunction. In the scratches, the engineers discovered huge teeth, as if a pack of alligators had surrounded a critical piece of tech and then attacked it, and did it very violently. The coating was very strong. Naturally, everyone got scared. In an attempt to find out what this monster was, the engineers consulted a Navy biologist. After carefully examining all the materials, the scientists concluded that the frigate might have been attacked by a giant squid. However, he also didn't rule out the possibility that it could be a creature of the ocean not yet discovered by people. Evidence that supported this theory was the structure of the teeth found in the coating. The only snag is that giant squids reach from 33 to 43 feet in length. However, a squid with teeth found in the scratches had to be at least 150 feet long. That's roughly half the height of the Statue of Liberty. This means that if the frigate was indeed attacked by a giant squid, it would have been one of the largest specimens ever found. Honestly, I don't even know which is more disturbing. The fact that there may still be a 150-foot squid swimming somewhere in the ocean, or that there might be a huge creature in the ocean which is unknown to science and which has sharp teeth that can damage the sonars. By the way, why would the creature attack the frigate in the first place? Let's assume it was indeed a giant squid. What was its intention? Well, there are several theories. Squids have been documented to attach themselves to vessels as they approach the end of their lives. Perhaps the squid was living out its last days and made its way to the surface, latching onto the ship for its final voyage and damaging the sonar by accident. Another theory says that the squid mistook the sonar for a sperm whale, and squids and sperm whales aren't exactly on good terms. It could have been an attack out of a mistake. But I personally prefer the third theory. Giant squids are just too damn aggressive. And that's not speculation. They're indeed like that. Giant squids, colossal squids, and the Humboldt squids are believed to be aggressive, opportunistic creatures. They prey on everything they come across, from light snacks of fish and shrimp to larger prey like cephalopods and whales. Humboldt squids are said to be particularly ferocious. Mexican fishermen call them red devils for their body colors and hostile nature. These squids are also ruthless cannibals. But we'll talk about cannibalism in a while, just keep that thought in mind. One would think such monsters can only be found somewhere in the open ocean, but in 2009, Humboldt squids were spotted in shallow waters near San Diego, California, and scared scuba divers out of their minds. These swarms of carnivorous cephalopods, each weighing up to 100 pounds, rose from the depths and began attacking unsuspecting divers. Some reported tentacles enveloping their masks and pulling at their cameras and gear. Reports of these encounters chased many divers and swimmers out of the water, but some people were simply torn between personal safety and a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Just imagine swimming with deep-sea giants. If you can survive that, you'll have something to tell your grandchildren about. Nevertheless, experienced divers immediately decided that they'd stay out of the water until the squid swam back to the depths. Why did they get so close to people in the first place? Unfortunately, Steve and I couldn't find an answer to that question. Did it have something to do with sperm whales? Many sperm whales stranded or caught by whalers have distinctive circular scars. Only one thing on the planet can do something like that. The strong suckers of a giant squid. Older sperm whales sometimes have so many scars they overlap each other. Yes, these scars on sperm whales' bodies prove that they regularly fight squids. The squid tries to defend itself by wrapping itself around the sperm whale, and the duel ends in horrific marks. Remember the teeth that tore the coating of the sonar? The same teeth pierce the skin of sperm whales. But unlike the frigate, sperm whales can feel pain. 
However, judging by the number of squid beaks that scientists find in the stomachs of sperm whales, the mammals emerge victorious quite often. Often, but not always, because the squid has everything it needs to win the fight. By the way, before I forget, since we mentioned stranded sperm whales, I just have to note that these scarred sperm whales are not the strangest things found ashore. On January 5, 2014, conjoined gray whale calves were discovered by fishermen in Laguna Ojo de Liebre in Baja, California, Mexico. They were about 10 feet long, meaning they were smaller than normal calves, which measure at 12 to 16 feet. Therefore, it was concluded that the calves were aborted. These conjoined calves were estimated to be 8.5 to 10.5 months old at birth, while a gray whale's gestation lasts 13 and a half months. Unfortunately, the researchers who found the calves in Mexico didn't see a mother nearby, and it's not known if it survived the miscarriage or not. But could these calves have a normal life in the sea if they hadn't been stranded? Well, the answer isn't encouraging. Even if these conjoined calves had been in the womb the right amount of time, they wouldn't have much chance for a long life because of their inability to come to the surface to get some air. Well, how can you swim when you're joined to your sibling and you both can't agree on where to go? One wants to eat, the other wants to breathe. One wants to go up, the other wants to go down. Not to mention it'd be very difficult for a mother to feed them. Well, now let's go back to the squid arsenal. Although I mentioned three different squid species, they have similar weaponry. Two long squid tentacles are used to grab the prey and eight arms are used to hold and subdue it. Giant and colossal squids have some of the largest tentacles in the world, up to seven feet long. If you're the prey, this leaves you very little chance to escape when you find yourself within the reach of the squid. A giant squid, for example, can snatch prey 33 feet away, so you might not even notice you're in danger, since a giant squid's eyes pick up movement at a distance of over 393 feet it'll definitely see you. The squid's tentacles are surprisingly fast and elastic, allowing them to quickly grab frightened prey and securely hold it with suckers. Each arm has a different length, from three to four feet. This makes it easy for them to maneuver around so you won't get a single opportunity to get away. In addition to length and dexterity, the tentacles are dangerous thanks to the suckers, which can produce a suction force of over 800 kilopascals. Oh, and don't forget about the hooks. The colossal squid is the only species that has these hooks on its arms and tentacles. Moreover, they can rotate 360 degrees. It's not known whether the squid can actively control each hook individually or whether the hooks passively rotate when latched onto the prey to hold it. Either way, this feature makes the grip even stronger and the predator even deadlier. Remember the marks on the sperm whale skin? There are tough serrated rings of chitin around the suction cups of giant squids, kind of like our fingernails, but with a saw-like structure. If you are a squid prey, these serrations dig into your skin. For a sperm whale, this means scars. For someone with thinner skin, terrible injuries and even death. As soon as the squid realizes that its prey is held tight and will definitely not escape its grip, the predator gets to work. It needs to chop the prey into fitting chunks for swallowing. And this is where the beak comes into play. The squid's beak is an incredibly strong thing. It's hard, which means it's difficult to crush or scratch stiff, which means it can't be bent or deformed, and it's also resistant to fractures. This combination of properties makes the squid beak more reliable than virtually all known metals and polymers. And this is no exaggeration. In an experiment, a giant squid shattered two Kevlar plates with its beak, establishing its bite as one of the strongest bites in the world. According to preliminary reports, the force of the giant squid's bite was more than a thousand pounds, second only to crocodiles. But if you're still not impressed enough or think that you have a chance to escape and survive, the squid is ready to demonstrate its last secret weapon. It's venom. Yes, you heard right. Squid venom is an intriguing and relatively unknown part of its arsenal. It's recently been discovered that some squids are actually capable of producing a toxic cocktail in their saliva that can paralyze or even kill their favorite prey, crabs. So far, we're only talking about Sepiotuthis australis. Squid venom is as deadly to crabs as snake venom is to mice and rats. The way it works is pretty typical. Neurotoxins paralyze or even kill prey, entering its body through a hole in the shell, which the squid makes using its sharp beak. Actually, if you think that venomous squids are something far-fetched, keep in mind that 150 years ago, most people thought that giant squids did not actually exist. They were considered sea monsters, made up by sailors to explain strange sea phenomena. 
What the? In fact, they've been found in human lore for centuries and were the inspiration for the Kraken in Norse mythology and the beasts in Jules Verne's novel 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Even the famous kraken you saw in Pirates of the Caribbean is also just a literally exaggerated giant squid. Despite numerous attempts to take a photo of this semi-mythical creature, scientists haven't been able to film a living giant squid until 2013. Being so elusive, it's not surprising that squid served as inspiration for monsters from sailor stories. However, advances in genetics show that giant squids have been on our planet for about 730,000 years. Living 1,300 to 3,000 feet below in the ocean, these creatures hide from sunlight, and this greatly complicates research. There's much about their life cycle and behavior that we still don't know. We don't know how long giant squids live, or how they find a mate. These predators are known to attack sperm whales, so it's not exactly surprising that scientists decided to use sperm whales for observations. Of course, the sperm whales had no idea they were participating in a science project, in 1997, the National Geographic Society conducted an ambitious experiment. The idea was to attach video cameras to a sperm whale and watch it consume a giant squid. Doesn't sound like the best idea for a reality show, to be honest. Anyway, the experiment was not a success. The video camera mount didn't last long enough. The cameras were attached to the blubber layer of the sperm whale with tethers that dissolved after about two hours in the ocean water. This allowed the football-sized camera to float to the surface and apparently the cameras surface faster than sperm whales encounter giant squids. But in general, the sperm whale is not the only opponent of the giant squid that matches its size. There's an epic battle going on in the deep cold waters of Antarctica, the colossal squid versus the Antarctic toothfish. Never heard of it? Meanwhile, the Antarctic toothfish is the largest fish in the Southern Ocean. It can grow to more than 5.7 feet long and weigh up to 300 pounds. The Antarctic toothfish feeds mainly on shrimp and smaller fish. A few years ago, scientists discovered that the huge fish and squid are engaged in a fierce struggle for survival. Cephalopods hunt Antarctic toothfish just as actively as orcas, but Antarctic toothfish also actively hunt squids. In 2015, a global study found that 71 of the Antarctic toothfish have been preyed upon by squids, with their bodies having scars all over from hooked suckers. In some cases, fish had missing chunks of bodies, clearly taken out by powerful squid beaks. But even more remarkable was that 57 of the fish had pieces of the colossal squid in their stomachs, ranging from pieces of mantle to tentacles that reached a whopping 7.8 feet long. The researchers concluded that although the frequency of squid attacks on predatory fish is not particularly high, they still actively hunt these large animals, which hunt them back in return. Frankly, it's no surprise that the researchers' conclusions are pretty vague. Even the maximum size of a giant squid remains a mystery. There are historical accounts claiming squids can reach 98 feet long, but since there are no preserved specimens, it's impossible to verify this. Remember the squid that attacked the frigate? Could it really have grown to 150 feet long? It's not clear how one could check that. Although we don't know everything that's going on deep down below in the ocean, most scientists believe that female giant squids reach about 43 feet long, and males about 33 feet. The largest colossal squid found so far was about 29 feet long and was probably still a juvenile. Again, these are only theories. As I said, squids are too elusive to be properly studied. Measuring a dead squid seems like the best option at first glance, but this method has its own nuances. A squid has two long tentacles that extend far beyond its body to determine its full length. But these tentacles are elastic and can change in size after the squid dies. Try figuring out if they're small or just shrunken. But maybe we can still figure out which of the three species of giant squid is the biggest. Maybe that's where all scientists concur. Alas, some experts believe that colossal squids don't get as big as giant squids, and they never grow to even 43 feet long. Others say they can even grow to 59 feet. Once again, it all comes down to the complicated nature of research. However, we can speculate. So we have the giant squid, the colossal squid, and the Humboldt squid. The last one is out right away. It can't measure up to its cousins. Now, it all depends on the measurement parameters. Well, and whether we trust the data we have. The giant squid is the longest, and the colossal squid is the heaviest. However, both of these amazing creatures grow to an impressive size. But don't worry, the Humboldt squid also has something to boast of. This creature can survive in icy water with little to no oxygen. 
Every night, the Humboldt squid rises from the depths of the ocean to feed on the surface for several hours. It eats a lot and does it very intensely. Well, who doesn't love late night snacks, right? Before dawn, the squid plunges back into the cold abyss, not bothered by how uncomfortable it is. The conditions deep down below are indeed as uncomfortable as they could get. The squid faces oxygen deprivation, high pressure, and near freezing temperature. To survive in such extreme conditions, the squids, well, let's just say they alter their DNA by going into suspended animation and slowing down their metabolic rate. There's a pretty complicated chain of DNA modifications there. I'll talk about it some other time. Nevertheless, squids reduce oxygen demand and energy intake, turn off non-essential biological processes, and prevent damage from low temperatures. In short, they slow themselves down in every conceivable way. And squids can live really deep. They don't even have to get gigantic to do so. In early 2022, a team of subsea explorers made the deepest dive ever to a shipwreck site. They hoped to find a ship that had sunk during an intense naval battle in 1944, but they discovered something even more unexpected. The researcher was sitting in his office aboard the expedition ship, scrolling through video frames, when a vague but recognizable shape appeared on his screen in the light of a submersible. The squid was swimming right above the seafloor at an incredible depth of 20,400 feet, so you can understand the scientist's surprise. That's 4,900 feet deeper than anyone had ever seen or recorded squids before. After a careful study, the researchers identified the species as a big fin squid, a species usually found only at depths of 13,000 to 16,000 feet. What was this guy doing that deep below? Who knows? Maybe it just felt like diving. But back to the Humboldt squid. This species is known for its voracity and feeding at an astonishing rate. Sometimes this squid would even steal a hooked fish before the angler gets a chance to reel it in. I mentioned earlier that members of this species can also be cannibalistic. One time, people noticed something absolutely terrifying. One squid was caught on a fishing hook, and another, realizing that it was caught and defenseless, attacked it to eat it. Then the same happened again, and again, and again. Now we know that the Humboldt squid never misses a chance to eat its own kin if it can't fight back. There's even some research on this issue. After analyzing the stomach contents of 533 squids of this species, scientists found evidence of cannibalism in 26% of them. The bigger the squid, the more often it ate other squids. Well, females, which grow somewhat larger, resorted to cannibalism more often than males when given the opportunity. We have to be honest about the Humboldt squid, though. This species isn't the only one spotted stealing fish. In 2015, a giant squid attempted to steal the catch from a Russian fishing vessel in exactly the same way. Imagine your vessel being attacked by a mini kraken. I probably wouldn't have risked fighting back and gave the squid everything it wanted and then some, but the fishermen were not taken aback. They fought back against the squid until it got frustrated and fell behind. One must really have nerves of steel to pull that off. And then I realized that we still haven't looked at one of the distinct features of squids. Hiding in the depths of the Pacific Ocean, there's a strange creature that's developed an unusual defense mechanism to avoid being eaten. Octopatuthus delatron can break off its arms to escape predators. There are, in fact, plenty of predators deep down below. Elephant seals, creepy giant grenadier fish, and even the mysterious Perrin's beaked whale. When attacked by one of these creatures, the squid plants its arms in its attacker, and then breaks them off. Don't ask me how it came up with this strategy. I have no clue. Nevertheless, the squid's arms are covered with sharp hooks that can dig into the predator's skin, causing pain and discomfort. Plus, its bioluminescent arms flash brightly, which can confuse and disorient an attacking predator enough to allow the squid to get away. This defense strategy is similar to what lizards do when they detach their tails to escape predators. Except lizards don't stick their tails into someone who threatens them. Squids can regrow their limbs, but this requires time and energy. Swimming with one or two arms makes it difficult to get food and find mates. Yes, the limbs grow precisely to attract mates. Nevertheless, this species has developed an effective way to survive despite its dangerous habitat. It's either being left without arms and facing the difficulties of survival or dying on the spot. Well, it's clear what the squid chooses. But let's get back to the giant squids, which scientists still know so little about. This goes for their reproductive cycle as well. 
Colossal squids have to reproduce somehow. But how exactly? Once, an adult female colossal squid was found in shallow water, which probably means they spawn in shallow water. And yet, we do know something. Colossal squids appear to have very high fecundity. Just imagine, they spawn over 4.2 million germ cells. That's probably the highest count among cephalopods. Females lay large numbers of eggs, collecting them in egg sacs, which in some cases weigh up to 11 pounds. A couple of years ago, divers off the west coast of Norway stumbled upon a blob that turned out to be a squid egg sac the size of an adult man. It was filled with hundreds of thousands of tiny spheres, baby squid eggs. The eggs themselves were round and transparent. Have you already imagined how many interesting things you could learn by studying such an egg sac? Unfortunately, it's very difficult. You have to work with super delicate and fragile material, and it's almost impossible to conduct the research without disturbing the babies. Actually, the way squids reproduce, let's just say it causes some problems. Remember that squid which plants its arms and the predators to escape? During mating, the males of this species touch the female's body and attach a capsule called a spermatophore to it, which contains smaller sacs with millions of sperm. They make their way from the sacs to the body of the female on their own, if of course the father-to-be manages to attach the capsule where it's supposed to be. Everything would be fine, especially for scientists who can observe the entire process if it weren't for one snag. Once, this feature of squid reproduction almost made one woman pregnant. Let me explain right away, the pregnancy wasn't real. The 63-year-old woman was eating a portion of cooked squid when she felt a sharp pain in her mouth. She went to the doctor and said she felt some bug-like organisms in her mouth. Upon examination, the doctors found several small pods filled with live squid seed. Apparently, the squid hadn't been properly cooked, and the live sperm, not realizing what was going on, attached themselves to the mucous membranes they were exposed to. Doctors removed 12 of these sacs from the woman's mouth. 12! Well, congratulations on a new phobia, everyone. See you later.